So in this video, we're going to talk about finding the volume of a solid by the cylindrical shell method. Now the difference between the cylindrical, the biggest difference between the cylindrical shell method and the disc method is that when we are revolving around the y-axis, I do my integration with respect to x, not y. When we're doing the disk method, when I revolve around the y-axis, I do my integration with respect to y. So when I'm doing the integration around the x-axis with the shell method, I'm going to integrate that with respect to y, so unlike the disk method. So if I take a look at my shape here, so here's my shape. If I partition it off, in other words, I'm going to cut this, so I'm going to do all these cuts, one, two, three, four, five cuts as an example. So I have those five cuts as an example here. Then each one of those cuts I have is going to build a rectangle. So this has some height and the height is going to be determined by the function at that point. So this is like when we were doing um, Riemann sums. Here's what it looks like up here. So let me just move this down so we can take a look. For this, you like that? I'm loving that. For this particular rectangle, it has some width, delta x, and the height is going to be determined by the function. And you can see that what I've made is I've made the shell. It's not a disc because it's not solid, so it's the shell that I made. And in particular, all of these shells fit nest inside each other, and they're all based on the number of cuts that I had. So the volume is going to be equal to f of each piece, that is f of x sub i, and then that's going to be its radius. So basically what our shell is approximately equal to is the circumference of our, our shape and then multiplied by the height at any given time. So if I were to cut this, you can see that if I take my shell that I built and I cut it, this right here, that is the circumference. The circumference is equal to pi 2 pi r, where the r is whatever our radius is. In this case, it's x. It's not always going to be x. We're going to talk about when it's not x. And the height here is going to be based on the function itself, and then it's going to have some depth to it. And that's how you'd find the volume of that particular shell. Now, as we know, as x goes to infinity, we're taking our Riemann sum, and as x goes to infinity, we end up with an integration. This integration is 2 pi r times h. And that's what that represents, where h is the height of the function and that x is the, is the radius. Now, radius is not always going to be x. We're going to talk about later in some of our examples where the radius is not x or it's not y. So if I'm revolving around the y-axis, I integrate with respect to x. So when you are determining which way you want to integrate, it's in your best interest to do a quick sketch of each curve. So here I went out, out to Desmos to give you a better sketch than what I would have done myself. So here is the graph, 5x to the third. Now for this, we are going to be integrating between 0 and 1. So we're going to integrate between 0 and 1. So my integration is 0 to 1. And I'm revolving about the, um, the y-axis. So, and as I do this revolution, it's going to be about the y-axis. So I'm going to use this formula here. I have to figure out what my radius is at any given time. So to figure out what my radius is, is the radius is going to be whatever I've gone in terms of x. So in this case, my radius is x. My height is going to be determined on my function f of x, which is equal to 5x to the third. So 5x to the third. So 
this integration is going to be equal to 2 pi, my radius, which happens to be x, and then my function, which is 5x to the third, dx. Now, I know that the 2 and the pi can come out front because it's just a constant, so 2 pi, 0 to 1. Then I have 5x to the fourth dx. I go ahead and integrate this, and so when I integrate this, I'm going to get 2 pi multiplied by, well, remember, I'm going to add a power and then divide by that, so I end up multiplying by x raised to the fifth from 0 to 1. I put in 1 in, and so I get 2 pi multiplied by 1 to the fifth minus 2 pi multiplied by 0 to the fifth. So my final answer is 2 pi units, whatever the units are, cubed, because it's a volume, it's units cubed. Let's take a look at our next example here. Again, I'm going to go out to Desmos and do a quick graph of this so that we can look at whether or not we need to adjust for any um, uh, radius or not. So let's go out on to Desmos and grab that picture. So this is what y equals 1 minus x squared looks like. And I need to figure out what my radius is, and I'm going from 0 to 1. So let me just move over a little bit. So I am going from 0 to 1. My radius at any given time is going to be how far x I've gone. My height at any given time is going to be determined by the square root of 1 minus x squared. So this is going to be integrated from 0 to 1, 2 pi, my radius on this one is just x, multiplied by the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now, for this one, what I want to do is I want to do u substitution. The reason I want to do u substitution on this is because I see the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I'm going to let u equal 1 minus x squared, so that means du is equal to negative 2x dx. So negative du is equal to 2x dx, because I have a 2, I have an x, and I have a dx. But I didn't have a negative, so I have to adjust for that negative. Now, because I've changed what x is, um, with a u substitution, I have got when x is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, u is equal to 0. So then this becomes from 1 to 0 of this 2, this x, and this dx, those all get replaced with a negative du. So I have negative, the pi is still there, and then this part gets replaced with u, so I have u raised to the 1 half, it's a positive 1 half, raised to the positive 1 half du. So then, because of the fact that I should start with the smaller number being my lower limit, I have this rule that says I can switch the limits of an integration, but then it ends up becoming the negative of it. So this is going to be the negative of the negative 0 to 1 of pi u raised to the 1 half du, which is just going to be equal to the positive from 0 to 1 of pi u raised to the 1 half du. So this is going to be equal to pi. Remember, I add a power and I divide by that. So then it's going to be 2 thirds u to the 3 over 2 integrated from 0 to 1. So this is going to be equal to 2 thirds pi, 1 raised to the 3 halves, minus 2 thirds pi, 0 raised to the 3 halves. So 
So my final answer is 2 thirds pi units cubed. So that's that one. Let's take a look at our next one here. And for our next one, again, I'm going to go out to Desmos, and I am going to graph this at Desmos and bring that picture in. So here's the graph of 1 over 1 minus x squared. We are integrating between 0 and 1 half. So my radius, so here's my shape, revolving around the y-axis. My radius at any given time is going to be x, and the height at any given time is going to be defined by f of x, or in other words, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So my integration here, so I'm going to integrate between 0 and 1 half of 2 pi, my radius, which is x, multiplied by 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now, if you're thinking, holy shimoli, I have to do integration by u substitution, you are correct. So this is u. So u is equal to 1 minus x squared. And then that means du is equal to negative 2x dx. And you're thinking, wait, this is a lot like my previous one. And you are absolutely right. So negative du is equal to 2x dx. Now remember, if I change my variable here with u substitution, I do need to change my limits of integration. So when x is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1 half, u will be equal to uh, 3 fourths. So 3 fourths. Okay. So this is going to be equal to, I'm going to integrate, now don't forget, I'm going to integrate between my lower limit, which is 1 to 3 fourths. And I have, this gets replaced with 1 over u to the 1 half, the 2, the x, and the dx gets replaced with a negative du. And then don't forget we still have pi, so go ahead and squeeze that pi in there. Now just like in my previous one, I realized that my lower limit is a larger number than my upper limit. So we know that when that happens, just erase this over here so it's not distracting. When that happens, we know that we can change the limits so that this is going to become this negative here will cancel when I change my limits. So it ends up becoming a positive 3 fourths to 1 pi. Right, there's a u raised to the negative 1 half du. And again, I add 1 and I divide by that power. So this is going to be equal to pi, and then it's going to be 2u raised to the positive 1 half integrated between 3 fourths and 1. So let me just get rid of this 2. When I evaluate this at 1, this is just going to give me 2 times pi times 1 raised to the 1 half, so nothing new there, minus 2 times pi, and then this is going to be the square root of 3 fourths, so 3 fourths raised to the 1 half. The square root of 3 fourths is the same thing as the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So this is going to be equal to 2 pi minus 2 pi square root of 3 over 2, those are going to cancel. So your final answer is 2 pi minus pi, the square root of 3, units cubed. So there's that one. Let's take a look at when we integrate with respect to y, because we're revolving around the x. So when we are integrating with respect to y, because we're revolving around the x-axis, then we're going to have the same kind of thing. It's still going to be this circumference. So the circumference is going to be 2 pi r, where, where r is now the y. 
And we're going to multiply that by the height. Well, now the height is a function with respect to y. So let's take a look at our first example. Again, let's go out and um, get a graph of x squared. Okay, so for this one, we are integrating between 0 and 2. So between 0 and 2. So here's where we're integrating. Now, we are integrating around the x-axis, so I have to get everything in terms of y, because my I'm going to be doing this v equals from c to d. These are the y values from c to d. And then, of course, I have to figure out my radius this way with respect to y, and I also have to have my function as a, res as a function of y. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and solve for x. So, so I'm gonna take the square root of both sides and I get the square root of y is equal to x. Now, normally I would put a plus and minus, but because we're working in first this first quadrant, I don't have to worry about the plus and minus because the first quadrant my y's are gonna be positive. So x is equal to the square root of y. And then my limits of integration is for with respect to y, I'm actually going to start at 0 and I'm going to end at 4 because I can see that when with respect to y, I start at 0 and go to 4. So from 0 to 4 of 2 pi. I've got to figure out my radius. My radius is always going to be perpendicular to the um, to the axis of rotation. So my radius is going to be this, and that's just going to be y. So that's not a problem, so multiplying by y. The problem that comes in is I have to figure out the height. Now, if I wanted this part of it, if I wanted to find this part being my height, then it would be just the square root of y. However, the height that I want is actually right here. And so what I have for the height is the maximum height is going to be in terms of x, and that's going to be 2. And that means that the height is going to be 2 minus the square root of y. So that's the height that I want, because the area that I want to rotate around the x-axis is this area. It is not this side on, it's not this side here. So because it's not on this side, my height is not going to be the square root of y. It's going to be 2 minus the square root of y. So then I'm going to multiply it by 2 minus the square root of y dy. So when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and pull the 2 pi out, 0 to 4. And then I'm going to distribute the y. So 2y minus, now recall y, the square root of y is the same thing as y raised to the 1 half. So when I'm multiplying by y, I'm adding 1 to it. So in other words, I have y raised to the 3 over 2 dy. Now I'm going to go ahead and integrate. And when I integrate, I have 2 pi. And then I'm going to add 1 power and divide by that. So I'm going to add 1 power here and divide by that number. So it is 1 to begin with. I'm going to add 1 to it. So it is 2 divided by 2. So it's just going to be y. And then minus, don't forget, I'm going to add 1 here. So in other words, I'm going to add 2 over 2 to that. And so that's going to be y raised to the 5 over 2. But don't forget to multiply by the reciprocal of that, so 2 fifths. And that should be squared evaluated from 0 to 4. So this is going to be equal to 2 pi. I'm going to put 4 in there, so it's going to be 4 squared minus 2 fifths, 4 raised to the 5 over 2. So this is going to be equal to 2 pi, and 4 squared is 16 minus. Now, 4 raised to the 5 over 2 is the same thing as the square root of 4 raised to the fifth power. So in other words, this is going to be 32. 
So it is going to be 2 fifths multiplied by 32. So this is going to be equal to 2 pi. I'm going to take 16. I'm going to multiply it by 5. So I have the same common denominator. So 16 multiplied by 5 is 80 fifths minus 64 fifths, 2 times 32. So I have 2 pi, and then I'm going to take 80 and subtract 64, and I get 16 over 5. So my final answer is 32 pi over 5 units cubed. Okay, so let's take a look at our next example. And before I do that, I'm going to probably have to erase this because I'm going to need this space. So let me go ahead and take a moment to erase this so I can have a space to do my next example. Just going to give myself some space here. I know that when I um, undo what ends up happening when I undo, it takes it off completely. So I have to take the moment to do the erasing. So let's take a look at my next example here. I have 1 over 1 plus y squared. As before, I'm going to go ahead and graph this. So when I graph this, I get this shape over here, which is obviously kind of looks like a, I don't know, kind of a cool shape though. Obviously not a function though. So as I take a look at this, I'm going to go from y equals zero. So from y equals zero, right here, so when y equals 0, and I'm going to go until x equals 1 fifth. Well, I need to have this in respect to y, because I am going about the x-axis, so I need to find the um, y value that's associated to that. So I'm going to have 1 fifth, because that's what x is equal to, 1 over 1 plus y squared. So I have 1 plus y squared is equal to 5 y squared is equal to 4, y is equal to positive and negative 2. But because we're working at just the, the, um, the first quadrant, because we're doing the rotation where x is greater than 0 on all of these, that means that I don't have to worry about the minus. And so my in limits of integration are going to be from 0 to 2. Now, I have to figure out which, which one is my... my um, so I'm going to go all the way up to 2. So here is 2 where I'm going to stop. So I'm going to integrate in this region. I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis. I have to figure out what my radius is. Well, my radius at any given time is going to be perpendicular to my um, axis of rotation. So that radius is just going to be y. So 2 pi times my radius. My height, because it's already solved for x, my height at any given time is going to be 1 over 1 plus y squared. So this is going to be multiplied by 1 over 1 plus y squared dy. So then this is equal to, from 0 to 2, of 2 pi. And then I'm just going to write this as y. And in fact, I'm going to write this like this. Let me erase that too. I'm going to rewrite it like this. I'm going to rewrite as pi on the outside because it's just a multiplier. I'm going to write this as 2y multiplied by 1 over 1 plus y squared dy because, and you're thinking u substitution, and if that's what you're thinking, you would be correct. So let u equal 1 plus y squared. du is going to be equal to um, 2y dy. So that means I have a replacement for this. This is u. I have a replacement for this. This is du. So then all I have to do is change my limits of integration. When y is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When y is equal to 2, u is equal to 5. So this becomes then pi 1 to 5 of 1 over u du, which, when we do the integration here, we know that when you see 1 over u, that is the natural log. So it's going to be pi, 
the natural log of u evaluated from 1 to 5, which is equal to pi, the natural log of 5, minus pi, the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is 0, so this is just going to be pi, the natural log of 5. Oh, units, units cubed. And that's the answer for that one. Let's take a look at our next example. So let me go over to my next example here. So for my next example, I'm going to go ahead and go get the graph of that. So here's the um, graph of x equals cosine y. Notice my x-axis is in terms of 1, 2, and 3. <coughs> Excuse me. But my y-axis is in terms of pi. So notice that those are in terms of pi. Now, when we're integrating... <coughs> Excuse me. When we are integrating from x is equal to 0, so from here to x is equal to pi, we actually have two shapes that are going to be revolved around the x-axis. So that means that we're going to have to break these up into two different shapes. So first, let's determine what the radius is at any given part, and we're just going to look at this first shape. So we're going to integrate this first part from 0 to pi over 2, 2 pi. Now I've got to figure out my radius. My radius at any given point is going to be y, so that's not a problem, that's y. My height at any given point is going to be cosine y dy, so that's not a problem. Let's take a look at our other piece. So our other piece is going to go from pi over 2 to pi, 2 pi. At any given point, my radius is going to still be y, so that's okay. And then its height during that region is still going to be the cosine y dy. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these two together. Now, this actually is an integration by parts, so I'm not really certain why it's in this part of the book, because to be able to do this, you should know integration by parts. You could also look at it up in an integration table. You can do that too. Now, if you look this up in an integration table, let me just erase this part over here just to get this out of the way. If you look it up in an integration table, what you're going to see is you're going to see this. You're going to say if you're integrating from x dx, excuse me, the x cosine x dx, then what this is going to be when you do cosine x dx, and if you do it by parts or do it by the integration table, then this is going to be equal to the cosine of x plus x, the sine of x plus c. So you can do it by parts, which we'll learn, or you can do it by the integration table. And when you do it by the integration table, that's what it is. So let's go ahead and finish this by using the integration table. We will learn how to do it by parts. So this is going to be equal to, I have 2 pi as my multiplier. And then again, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have the cosine of y plus y, the cosine of y, excuse me, sine, sine of y, y, integrated from 0 to pi over 2, and then minus, or plus, because I have to integrate, I have to add that other piece, so plus 2 pi, and this is also going to integrate from cosine of y plus y cosine of y. Why do I want to say cosine? I don't know. I just like cosine, I guess. It should be sine. So it is y sine y. So y sine y. And it's going to be integrated from this one from pi over 2 to pi. I'm going to go ahead and let you finish that. Let's take a look at the two comparisons. If we compare side by side, the disk and the shell method. So when we have the disk or washer method, when I'm trying to find the volume, I will use the disk method when I don't have any holes and it's just integrating with respect to the x-axis or the y-axis and I'm working with only one function. I will use the washer method when I am doing a rotation about a particular axis and I have two functions to worry about. So in other words, I almost have a shell there. And then 
when I am doing the integration with either the disc or the wash method, whichever way I'm rotating, so if I'm rotating around the x-axis, it is respect to x. Rotating around the x-axis, it is respect to x. That means my functions need to be in terms of x. The other thing that you should take note of is if I'm integrating with respect to x dx, then with this method or with this method, I am finding the cross-sectional area, so area cross-sectional, which is why I have f of x, the quantity squared. And then it gets multiplied by pi. So with this method, it is going to be your function squared multiplied by pi. Or if you are doing a rotation and you are looking at an area between two curves, then it's going to be each one of those curves squared, subtracted from each other, and multiplying by pi. The shell method is when you're rotating around the x-axis, you're actually doing it with respect to y. So this is helpful sometimes versus the disk method. Notice when you were doing it with respect to y, it is the circumference multiplied by the height with respect to y. So you can do this with or without a cavity in the center. You use this one when you have a cavity, this one when you have no cavity, this one you can do with or without. You are doing it with respect to the opposite rotation that you are doing. So typical element of the disk method here is just this rectangle area and it goes all the way down and is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. When you are doing the washer method, that this is why it is a subtraction, so it's your upper one minus your lower one, they're both squared, and it is also an area that is perpendicular to your axis of rotation. When you are doing the shell method, your cross-sectional area, that piece that you are finding, is running parallel to your axes of rotation which is why your height is in terms of y and your radius is in terms of y. All right, let's take a look at these last couple of examples and then that will be it for today. So, and I don't know why this is messing up today. This is just not playing well. I'm not liking it. Okay, let's take a look at my first example. My first example is x cubed, and I can find the area rotated any way I want. So in this, I want to find the volume generated between the curves, and it's not telling me which way I want to do this. So I can do the rotation either by the disk method, because there's no hole, or I can do it by the shell method. Let's see if we do it by the disk method. So if I do it with a disk method and I'm rotating around the y-axis, that means I'm going to have to have everything in terms of y. Now, I don't want to do that. So let's do it since I don't since I'm going around the y-axis and I already have parts of this in terms of x. Let's do this with a shell method. So my shell method I'm going to integrate from 0 to well this is what the graph kind of looks like. This is one I didn't have to actually do too bad on in terms of graphing it by hand. Is I got to figure out what my my ending point here is. I've got zero, and I have to figure out where I'm going to end. And remember, this is two pi. My um, radius on this at any given time is going to be this distance here. So here's my radius. So that's going to be x, no problems there. My height, so that's x. My height is given by x cubed, so that's not too bad, so x cubed dx. The only thing I have to do is figure out what my upper limit is. So 8 is equal to x cubed. That means 2 is equal to x. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2. 0 to 2. So this is equal to... From 0 to 2, I'm going to pull out that 2 pi. I have x to the 4th dx, which is equal to 2 pi multiplied by x to the 5th divided by 5, evaluated from 0 to 2. 
We put 2 in there, and we're going to get 2 pi multiplied by 2 to the 5th divided by 5. So this is going to be 2 to the 5th is 32 times 2 more is 64 pi over 5 units squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Units cubed. And that's going to be that one. So let's take a look at our last two. So let's take a look at B. With B, we have x, or y is equal to the square root of x, which is this part. Let's move this over. This is y is equal to the square root of x. I'm going to integrate between y equals 0 and y equals 1. Or excuse me, y equals 0 and x equals 1. I'm going to rotate around this line x is equal to 2. So this is my axis of rotation, so x is equal to 2. This is my shape here. So this is the shape that I'm going to rotate around there, so it's going to be a donut shape. Now, my integration is from 0 to 1. So 0 to 1. And then I'm going to have 2 pi. Now I'm going to figure out what my radius is figure out what my radius is, is I realize the most I'm ever going to travel is 2. So at the most, I'm going to have a distance of 2 because I'm going from 0 to, from y equals 0 to the line x is equal to 2. And then this distance here is how far I've gone, which is x. So my radius is going to be 2 minus x. So this is the first time my radius is something other than just x. So it is 2 minus x. So 2 minus x. The height is no big surprise. The height here is just going to be um, the square root of x. So that is the square root of x, dx. Now I am choosing to use the shell method because for me the shell method is easier than the disk method. So I'm going to use the shell method because I am rotating about the line y equals 2 or x equals 2. Once I have done that part, then all I have to do is distribute and simplify. So I'm going to pull out the 2x, 2 pi from 0 to 1. I'm going to distribute in, so I have 2x raised to the 1 half minus x raised to the 3 over 2 dx. And this is like, wow, this looks so familiar. And it is. So this is equal to 2 pi multiplied by 2. And now remember, I'm going to add 1 here. So I'm going to add 2 over 2. So it is going to be x raised to the 3 over 2. And then I have to multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by 2 thirds. And then minus, I'm going to add 1 here, which means that it is 5 halves. So x raised to the 5 halves. Multiplying by the reciprocal, so 2 fifths. Evaluate it from 0 to 1. And, of course, when I put in 0, that's not going to do anything because they're both x's, which gives me 0. So this is going to be 2 pi multiplied by 4 thirds minus 2 fifths. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the lowest common denominator. So when I multiply by the lowest common denominator, I'm going to get 2 pi. And then this is going to be uh, 20 minus uh, 6 all over 15. So 2 pi. And this is going to be 14 over 15. So my final answer is 28 pi over 15 units squared, or cubed, units cubed. Okay, now let's do our last one. Our last one is going to be y is equal to 1 over 4 minus x. x equals 1 and x equals 2. Rotate it around the line x equals 4. So once again, I'm going to go out and I am going to uh, graph this. All right, so here's my graph. My graph is going to go between 1 and 4, so, excuse me, 1 and 2, so here is 1, and here is 2. So this is the region in which I am going to be rotating 
about the line x equals 4. So I know I'm going to go from 1 to 2. I'm going to use the shell method again, so 2 pi. And I've got to figure out what my radius is. So when I take a look at my radius, just like before, the most I can ever going to get is 4. So there's 4. And then however far I'm going to get is x. But the region I want is this. That's my radius, which is 4 minus x. That's my radius. So my radius is 4 minus x. And then my height at any given point, so my height at any given point is the 1 over 4 minus x. So multiply by 1 over 4 minus x. Then I'm going to multiply that by dx. And this one's kind of nice because these will cancel themselves out, leaving me the integral from one to two of just two pi dx, which is just two pi x even evaluated from one to two. So this is just gonna be two pi multiplied by two minus two pi multiplied by one. So in other words, my answer is just gonna be two pi because that's four minus two pi, which gives me just two pi units. Cubed. And that's it. That is the shell method.